Cold War, CIA versus KGB. It's a fun little card game where players um, each take the role of perfectly symmetrical sides and compete via this bluffing mechanism and is sort of variant on blackjack to see who can get the most points. Play consists of a number of rounds. The first thing that happens in a round is an objective card is drawn from the pile of objective cards. This is what the players are going to be competing to get. Okay, after the objective card is revealed, players are each going to choose one of their spy cards. And the spies are identical except for their names and faces. I'll, look, I'll show you those later. Um, and that's where the bluffing comes in. All right, so players are going to pick their spies, and then they're going to take turns. What they do on the turn is they can draw a group, or they can use a group, or they can pass. Um, if players pass in sequence, one after another, um, then the round is over. Now what they're doing with their groups is they're looking at this number, and they're trying to get as close to this number as possible without going over. Because if you go over, that's like busting in blackjack, and you lose your spy, unless it's a special lieutenant spy, um, and you also lose the objective to the other player. Because my friends are all Soviet sympathizers, I'm showing you the CIA spies, because they're the ones I'm most familiar with. I am told, however, that the KGB spies are identical. Um, the bluffing kind of hinges foremost, I think, on whether or not a player is playing the master spy. See, at, the player who gets closest to the objective number here gets to place their dominance token on it. And I'll, I want to talk to you about these more later. These are... Hmm. Um, now the thing is, if, if I have played my master spy and KGB has their dominance token on this objective, then I get to flip it around and I actually end up winning. Whereas if, if I had played any other of the, the other five spies and they had placed their dominance token on it, they would win. So you're, one of the big questions you're asking yourself when you are doing the um, putting out the groups and playing the little game of back blackjack is whether or not your opponent has placed their master spy. Right, then you have the assassin. The assassin kills any of the other ones if you win. So if I'm the CIA and I get my dominance token placed on the objective at the end of the round, which means I got closest to this number, then my assassin gets to kill their other spy. Unless they put the deputy director. He, the deputy director is special because he can never be killed or put on leave. Then you have a couple spies that will get to do something whether you win or lose. They're kind of um, the hedge your bet spies. They, they give you some bonus for the next round. And then you have the director, which is you play the director when you think you're going to win because the director makes you win big. Um, so we have our hinge here, the master spy, which the other ones go around, and then you have the assassin, which has this other sort of dynamic going, and your director, which is your ace in the hole. And then your planners. Because I've touched them recently, I want to talk to you now about these three tokens that come with the game. First and foremost, I have to tell you they are amazing. They feel amazing. They have a great weight to them. They ha they're like holographic, really shiny. Um, there's three of them. They just feel really good in my hand. I like to rub them on my skin. I'm not going to go into that further. Um, second, I will tell you they're completely superfluous. If you have this game and, say, lose these because you take them out for some reason, it's okay. You don't need them for play. Um, what they do do is they just kind of help you remember things, certain things, like who won the round. Um, but really, you don't need the token for that. Um, this one, these are the one, these are the dominance tokens, CIA, KGB. This one is the balance token. This one, um, if you're down in the game, this if you have this token, you get to decide who plays first. That's basically what it does. Again, that's something you could probably remember. I don't know that you need the physical thing, but I think it's a special reward. Um, or a special um, consolation prize to get to have this because it does feel good. And to have two, um, one in each hand, it, uh, it, it gives you a certain sense of symmetry, whereas normally you only get to hold on to your one. So there's, that's a nice thing about it. Um, one thing, quick thing I want to note that a friend of mine who I've played this a few times with 
pointed out to me, um, you, you start out deciding who gets to have the balance token by placing it in one of your hands and then having someone pick. He is able to tell by the way someone holds the things um, which hand it's in because you know, you're holding it. So what he suggested is that you put both in your hand and then if they pick the one that is their color, they get to have the balance token first. A small thing, but those with a trained eye, you know, I think it's supposed to be random, those with a trained eye can figure out who is holding the solitary balance token. So beyond the, the, the choosing of the spy, the game is this um, interesting little, I think it's fun, uh, kind of blackjack. Now it's blackjack with special powers. So there are four different kinds of cards in the game, group cards. They have names, like general, government, here's newspapers, radio is like just like newspapers, except one better. Um, and then there's economic cards. So you have your like fighty cards, your governmental cards, your economic cards, and your media cards. They, all the blue cards, all the media cards do the same thing, all the green cards do the same thing, all the pink cards do the same thing, and all the gold cards do the same thing. Um, but they each have an a interesting little power that they can evoke that sort of adds a little bit more to the blackjack game, makes it a little, little less luck oriented, or a lot less luck oriented, and gives you some, some fun decisions you can make when you're fighting for whatever region you're fighting for. Ultimately, the game touches on the Cold War in this tangential, um, mythological sense. It's not going to immerse you in the time or really give you any insight into the struggle or um, make you feel like you are spies or that you're sending out spies or anything like that. It is going to be a, a, a fun, well-designed, I would say smooth game. Uh, for you to play with one another and you know the the subject matter the students the artists I always end up getting the artist who does this in the game um, they're almost they're almost used to comedic effect I think uh, I think they're it's a very silly game um, but a lot of fun and one you can play with your one friend and enjoy Cold War, CIA versus KGB.